Greetings, adventure. So you are seeking a new adventure. Well, Guild Wars 2 is an online role-playing game with fast-paced action combat, a rich and detailed universe of stories, eight inspiring landscapes to explore, two challenging player versus player modes, and no subscription fees. Guild Wars 2 is a MMORPG developed by ArenaNet and published by NCSoft. The game was originally released on 2012, August 28. You can currently play the game in their own launcher or very soon on Steam. And welcome to my beginner's guide of Guild Wars 2. I'm your host, Dvalin. Please sit down, relax, and I will take you through Guild Wars 2 and what kind of game it is. In this beginner guide, we are going through 20 topics. This means after you have watched this video, you should know pretty much all the basic things of Guild Wars 2 so you are ready to adventure into the game yourself. The first topic we're going to talk about is Homeworld. The reason for why I start with this one is because first time you create an account, log in, you have to select a server basically called Homeworld. If you don't care about PvP, it doesn't matter which server you play on, you can play any PvE content with your friends, even cross server. But you have to be in the same location, so if you play in Europe, you can only play with Europe and America can only play with America. But if you play PvP with your friends, we recommend you strongly to be in the same server since you will not be able to do world versus world versus world if you are not on the same server. After selecting your home world and creating your character, the first thing you have to choose between is your new race. You can choose between five races. You have the Char, the Human, the Norn, the Asura and the Sylvari. It's totally up to you which race you want to be in the game because all the races can be all the classes also. So there's no class restriction. So just pick the race that fits your playstyle. Once you have selected a race, you would need to pick between a female character or a male character. But there is no difference with stats or anything like that. It's totally up to you. Once you have selected your race and gender, you would have to pick a class. You can pick between these nine classes, the warrior, Guardian, Revenant, Ranger, Thief, Engineer, Necromancer, Elementalist, and Mesmer. The first three classes up here uses all heavy armor, so you can say they are a bit more tough. The next row is using medium armor, so it's a bit more, you can say, yeah, medium. And then you have the last three casters down here, which is using the cloth armor. Keep in mind, each of the classes have a lot of ways to play, so each class can basically equip a lot of different weapons that totally change the game style on how they are played. For example, a warrior can actually use a two-handed sword as a brutal warrior, or you can actually also as a warrior use a bow so you can shoot from a wall down on your enemies. Where, for example, the necromancer can also equip a two-handed sword and be a bit of a battle mage. So that's the cool thing with Guild Wars 2, that each of the classes has a lot of ways to be played and different fits of specs, so you always have something to play that fits you. Once you have created your character, you will be met with a little introduction video to the race you have been picking and, you know, tell the current situation of the world. After you have watched the cinematic, you will be placed in a tutorial world that will basically help you a little bit and telling you how to control, how to move, and there is a little quest that you have to do where in the end of the quest, you will be meeting a big world boss that you have to kill. Once you have finished the tutorial in the game, you will be placed in a starter area where there will be more small quests and things to progress on. The first thing I want to talk about before we get into the game is the movement. As you probably already have learned now, the game is based on WASD. So when you use your W, you'll be moving forward. And then you can also turn around with A and D and back pedal back with S. It is important you can hold down right click to move around, look around and see the game. You can scroll in, you can scroll in, sorry, <laughs> scroll in and out. So even to first person mode, if you wanted to do that. So it's very important to know that you could also do this for the movement. I think a lot of players, they don't know about this game is you can actually activate action camera. So you know how you play Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Online, how you look around with your, you can say like a, 
uh, like a shooting game, you can actually activate that in the game here too. So now you can see I have a little dot in the middle of my screen. And now when I move my mouse around with around without actually holding it down, it's like I'm playing an action game. And when I click with my mouse, I'm actually attacking. So this is something you can enable by going into options, control. And if you scroll down to this point here where it says camera, you can set a, uh, a command for enabling action camera and disabling. If you play with action camera, you will be moving around like this where it actually looks like an action game. It's pretty cool. But if you want to go back to tap targeting, you can use the same key you have selected. And now you can see I will be able to like click around on my targets and lock on them. So you can either choose to play this game as a tap target MMO, or you can choose to play it as an action MMO. That is the choice you have. So now you are ready. You have your character, you have experienced a bit of the tutorial, and you probably have started to feel how the movement is. Now we're going to talk about the combat. How is the combat and how can you do it efficient? The first five spells you have down here in the, you can say in your action bars, is your weapon spells. So depending on what weapon you have, if I press the key H, going into my hero bar and going to build and weapon skills, you can see depending on which type of weapon you play in the game, you will have different spells. So for example, I'm right now using great sword, which gives me these five spells. But if I used, for example, a long bow, I would get these five spells. So depending on what weapon you are wearing, you will also have different spells. It is really, really cool and some really unique in this game about your, you can say, weapon spells. Also, the next spell you have, which is number six, is your healing spell over here. Every class in the game has a healing spell on the sixth button. As you can see, I have customized my controls. So normally it will say six, seven, eight, nine, zero here, but I have customized my key bindings by clicking on escape options and going into key bindings here and actually change them. But the number six spell is always a healing spell. As you can see, if I take the drop down just here, you can see all these spells are healing spells and in this way every class in the game can actually heal themselves. The number seven to nine spell is utility skills which can help you, which can deal damage, also do a bit of healing, support your teammates. They, they can do a lot of different things and is this the same spells you can pick on all the three, you can say, taps the targets here. So for example, I have some class spells, some, sorry, some race spells, which only the Norn can play. For example, I can summon a worm or actually call an owl, or I can set a banner down, which gives everyone some kind of a buff, or I can take one which have some passive abilities like this one, which is passively giving me more power. So I deal more damage. Then you have the last one here, which is your ultimate skill, your elite skill. Here you have limited choices, but these elite skills is, you can say, your ultimate. If you used to play, for example, Overwatch 2 and you have your ultimate spell, this is basically your ultimate where you really, or oh, it's a cooldown from other MMOs, this is the strong ability that really takes out the enemy's teeth. And you have different spells here, like this one is called Rampage, which is transforming into a massive juggernaut. So I can just like go crazy on my enemy and kill him. Then we have here on the right side, we have the mount. This one is not for free to play players. So if you have a free to play account, you cannot use mounts. You need to have the expansion called Path of Fire, where you can unlock up to eight mounts. At the moment you can see I only have two, but you can get up to eight mounts here. When you press on this key here, of course, you will summon your mount and you can go off your mount again. And each of the mounts have different spells, which is pretty cool. As you can see now, this my mount actually attacked this guy here. Poor little guy. Yeah. In the top of your action bars here, you also have your profession, like which is also called your class. Well, they call it the profession. You can see I have a spell here called F1. If I go into my another weapon here, it will change to another spell. 
so each classes in the game they also have different spells up here which are unique Vorex, for example i'm playing right now only have one but deals more damage depending on how much adrenaline i have but if for example i play that elemental list i will have different transform which different elements i could transform into we also have a key over here which i kind of spoiled now this one swaps your weapon this means you can actually have two sets of weapon if i go in on h and go to my character equipment and go to equipment here you can see i have a two-handed sword as my main weapon and then in my we can say off spec i have an axe and a shield so i can basically switch between my two-handed sword and my shield with my axe so all the classes in the game has two different weapons and can switch between them but there is some classes in the game which cannot switch weapon in combat and that is as far as I know, the engineer and elementalist cannot change weapon in combat because they are created so they are only using one weapon in combat. The last thing I haven't shown you down here is the one, well, two things. We have the health bar here and we have the energy here, which basically means when I use my energy here, I'm dodging. As you can see, I can either click on it or click on my keybind V and where we are dodging. That basically means if there's a trap on the floor, you can actually dodge over the trap. But also if you use your dodge, you will also block an attack from an enemy. So if someone is throwing a spear at you or firing an arrow and you block on it or roll, it's actually called dodge, then you will dodge the spell and it will not attack you. If you have any buffs on you, you will have them here. As you can see here right now, I have a celebration bonus buff, which gives me 100% more boost to magic find, rank gain, and experience from kills and gold from kills. That is the small tutorial about everything you have down here. You, you, you can see your weapon spells, your healing spells, utility spells, your ultimate spell, your mount, buffs, and your class spells also up here. When you get into combat and you're already using all your spells, you can simply right click on an enemy and it will automatically begin to auto cast your first spell. Your first spell you can see you have like an arrow around it which means this is your auto cast spell. So you can either start the combat by pressing one or you can just right click on the target and it will start attacking it. From there on you can see there is some loot on the enemy which you can just press F and it will auto loot everything around you or you can right click on the target and here you can see I got some loot. You can always find a target, use your spells like number two here and I can attack it and kill it. So in this way, you just simply like other MMOs, you can tap target to the target, use your spells and kill them in ferocity. Once you find yourself in a situation where you become attacked and you actually go down to zero health you will not die you will actually fight still fight on and you will lie on the ground where you can still throw attacks on your enemies and you can actually use your fourth spell to actually review yourself in this case i got fully resurrected fast because the enemies around me got killed so if you get knocked down by an enemy and one of the enemies die you will actually get up on your toes again but once you get to zero life you will fall to the ground and then you can fight on but of course when you if you die on the ground you will then die permanently once you are lying on the ground you have different spells for example my number two spell make them flee my number four is raising my hand and trying to heal myself and third one is putting some you can say rotten stuff on the ground but again if i kill enemies while i'm lying down i'll get resurrected or else of course i will get a death if i don't defeat the enemies while lying down it is important to know that when your enemies sorry when you have a teammate falling on the ground you can also run to him and help him up so you, your character will kneel down and try to resurrect the player that you are trying to resurrect so now after we have talked a bit about the game you probably have the question now what is the trinity of this game do we actually have tank healing and damage and to that question it is a bit hard to answer the short answer is no but the long answer is yes and the reason why is because for example when you create a character here you have different specs you can play and you can actually choose talents weapons which makes you more supportive so that means you can actually do some healing in the game 
you are not like a tap target healer that you have seen from other games where you just click on one of your party members and just spam flash heal so you heal the target constantly you have to use your skills which heals people around you some have passives that heal everyone when you attack so you can say you can you can go into a support build that helps your team get in healing but you can also go into to a spec which is helping your team with getting buffs removing debuffs you can also take a spec which helps with a bit of tanking for example when you raid there's a main tank i'm pretty sure that's the mesmer which has a build which can tank in raid so you can say there is different specs for each classes that has potentially to be a better healer or tank and so on but overall the game doesn't have tank healer damages but in in end game you will be changing your character so you actually have tank healing and damage but in a different ways of how you have seen it in other mmos it's pretty cool and it makes the game more unique and all the groups you see is super fun because everyone is dealing damage and having fun so now you have learned how to move your character how to you can say prepare in combat with the spells you can use but what about exploration what are you actually going to explore in the game and once you get started into the game you will find you at a starting location you will see a lot of different small you can say icons on the map and they probably confuse you in this game you don't really have questing like in other mmos you have you can say objectives on each map you can complete and then you have a main campaign we kind of go back to the main campaign in a moment but let's first talk about exploration so when you see on the map you can see there's a different spots and things you can unlock if you go to the left corner here you can see right now in world completion we have one percent explored of the game in queensdale where i am right now i have two percent explored that basically means i'm far behind in this area we have task here which is you can see the hard one the the hard icons so for example over here we have actually a task if i went over here it will show me a heart the hearts is basically what is normally a quest a quest in an mmo for example if i went over here the quest well the task over there would be that i have to kill worms kill bandits and give the cows for food so basically it is quest is like you see in other games like world of warcraft but you don't pick up the quest it's just over there you can finish it over there and then the heart becomes from a not golden heart to a golden heart and as we can see right now here we have 17 hearts in this well in this little land here we also have the icon here waypoints when you unlock a waypoint for example over here there's a waypoint we haven't unlocked yet we just simply have to walk over there and when we get over there we just have then we can use it as a teleport for example this waypoint here i've unlocked i can click on it and teleport over to it and over here we have also a waypoint and when i enable that one i can just also teleport to that one this enables fast travel in the game and is really cool we also have point of interest which is this one this is basically just like places you can go to you unlock them and you get experience points it is important to let you know that every time you do any of these you get experience points which help you leveling up your character so i 100 percent recommend you each time you leave a new zone for example this zone here and next time it is level from from level 1 to 15 and once you once you go down to 15 to 25 i recommend you to complete this map 100 percent because if you get world completion on 100 percent you will get a very cool batch next to your name which shows other people that you're pretty good to the game and you have unlocked 100% of the map we also have the hero challenges over here you can see they are like showing where they are when you uh, complete these hero challenges you will get a hero point which you can use in your build so you can actually like if i go in here and go to the build over here training you can see you have your different talent trees here which you can train up in and before you can actually train up in these you need hero points so you can train up in them 
So in the end, you will have trade up in everything. So you don't need them anymore in, in that way you can say, but this is for helping you to get full talent trees so you can get all your talents and all your talent trees. Then we have Vistas. Vistas is basically just an object that is hard to get. For example, over here, we have a Vista here. It just gives experience points, but all of them is placed on a jumping puzzle. So you would have to jump from a couple of things to actually get to it. It's quite fun to try to find out how you get to that Vista because they are all hidden between or sorry, hidden by a jumping puzzle. For unlocking these, for example, point of interest, you would just have to simply walk under it like here, boom, and it tells me you got it and I get some experience points. The same would be with the quest over here, the task that we have, the heart over here, for example here, now I'm unlocking this waypoint here so I can teleport to it, more experience points. And here, now I have unlocked that I can complete this task here, which tell me held dire by tending corn, stomping worms, uh, mounds, entertaining cattle and defending the field. And also there is a point of interest in here I can walk under and I unlock that one and get additionally more experience points again. So you can say you don't have quests like in World of Warcraft, but you have all these objectives you have to complete on the map, which for me is less stressful because I don't have a full quest book. But in this case, I just has, have a lot of points of interest that I need to unlock on the map instead. You can also be so lucky to find events when you're questing or walking around in the open world and you will find them looking like this, like an orange circle around an area and they all the events are different things. It can be a world boss, it can be kill five monsters, it can be anything. In this case, we can see we have to find shiny red apples and for finding uh, shiny red apples, I will have to stomp to this tree. Now I find them on the ground, I can un well, loot them up and we would have to walk over here to this guy over here and deliver the shiny apples. You can say this is a probably and here take my apples and we now help contribute it in this mission here and we can keep doing this and you can say the, the hard thing with this quest here is when you actually stomp the trees there is a small chance some spiders will fall down on you and attack you. So it's not always just you know fun and fun and giggle but yeah. Once you have completed an event, it will tell you how good you did. In this case, I got a gold medal. Then I got this experience points, some karma points and some coins. So events can be really useful to do because they give a lot of experience points. And if you do them better and don't just slack an AFK, you will actually get even more points. Beside of exploring in the world where you have the different things you can unlock, you also have your main campaign. You will always find the main campaign that you have enabled right now in the top right corner. It helps you showing on the map where you have to go and you can see over here, this is my main campaign at the moment. While you're on the, between level 1 and 80, you can only have the main campaign that is your hero story, where you will learn about who you are and where you can actually help. You can skip the cinematics or watch the cinematics, but once you get to level 80, you can actually pick another story campaign. By pressing H on your character, go to story journal here. You can see my story is the first story that you can only play while you're leveling up. I highly recommend to do your story because it gives a lot of experience points and it can really make your leveling fast. Also, you get items, lore, you know, stuff that is pretty cool. So this is like my story so far, this character. But once you hit the maximum level, you can then choose another story that will progress you through the part of the games. For example, when you get to level 80, you can choose the Scarlet War, which is season one. So that was back when season one was the, was the thing in Guild Wars. Then we have season two here with some different campaigns also that was leading up, as you can see, to Heart of Thorns expansion. So if you have the Heart of Thorns expansion, then at level 80, you can also enable this. The Heart of Thorns expansion gives you a glider. So when you jump out from high distance, you can use the glider to glide down. Then the Living World Season 3 started. Then Path of Fire released, which is the nearest expansion. And then Living Season 4 came. Path of Fire is actually also here where you get your mounts. 
So if you want to get mounts fast when you hit level 80, then you can start Path of Fire here and you will get mounts relatively fast. Then Living World Season 4 started, which you can also start when you reach level 80. And then the newest thing that is going on right now is the Ice Brute Sega down here, which is the quest that is leading up to the final expansion, which is released called End of Dragons, which is releasing later this year. As you can see right now, the newest chapter is chapter 5 called Champions, and they release with like a small months between each other. So this is a game where the campaign is going on and it's just continues and continues. So if you really like campaigns like this, you're going to love this. Like other MMOs, you can also level up. As you can see right now, I'm level 31 and my next level is 32. You can get experience by killing enemies, completing quests, completing any activity on the map. You can see all the things here I can unlock, which we have gone through, do your main campaign, basically anything in Guild Wars 2 give you experience to level up almost anything. Once you re level up, for example, here I have a cheating tome which gives me a level. When I use this one, as you can see, I get a level. And once you get a level, you get a little reward. So for each level in the game, you will get a reward. For example, in this case, I can pick between these three things, which gives different enhancement for 30 minutes. And then I get a die which can die my items. And then it tells me here that the upcoming levels is going to give me this. So this is the stuff that I can get in my next levels. So you can see 33, 39, 40, 45, and so on. So let's talk a bit about equipment because in any MMORPG, equipment is a big part, your items basically. When pressing H, and going to the first tab up here, you have equipment here. You have equipment, wardrobe, outfit, dice, and so on. The first one is called equipment, and here you have your gear. So basically you have your helm, shoulders, chest, hands, uh, legs, and shoes. Your first weapon and your second weapon. Over here you have your stats, and over down here you have your back. Here you have some accessories, rings, and amulets and underwater items. So you can also use underwater weapons. So when you swim, you also have underwater, underwater spells and weapons. Basically, as you can see in my items, they have different spell. It's a set, so you can say you have some sets bonus. It has some different stats. And you can see the color of the item is called exotic. It's like the orange one. Exotic items is something that is very easy to get and everyone has it as a minimum when they get to level 80. You can also just buy it full on auction house in a very fast rate. The next item is the pink one called Ascended, which is a bit harder to get where you have actually to play the game. You cannot buy it in the auction house. You have to do either raids, fractals, dungeons, PP to get Ascended gear, which is better. So if you meet, let's say in PvP, another player, in World vs. World who has full Ascended gear, he will be about 10% stronger than you. So the stats are not crazy on Ascended gear, but they are still better, like 10 to 50% better, what I've heard. It is important to notice that all the expansion which has released in Guild Wars 2 has not increased the level cap and has not done the items stronger. So if you are getting Ascended gear now, Probably in the next expansion still, your gear is still going to be the best. So if you don't mind using the same, you can say, probably not maybe the same gear because of stats, but in World of Warcraft, you would have to get new gear every time a new expansion comes out because the gear you have now is bad in the next expansion. Guild Wars is not that way. When you have, they are actually rewarding you when you have grinded a lot of good gear in the start, then when you get the next expansion you will be allowed to keep the gear you have and you can still use it and it's still very powerful so in that way you don't need another a new piece of item you could say it is important to notice also you can also get legendary weapons in this game which you can which actually you can buy an auction house but they are insanely exp expensive um, but also you can craft them which takes probably months because it's it's a long process to get all the materials 
legendary and ascended items has the same strength and same stats but the only difference between ascended and legendary is that legendary looks amazing and has some visual effects so if you hear someone say i have a legendary item and you have ascended items it doesn't matter really he just looks better if we go out here in the menu again you can see we also have wardrobe basically the wardrobe is a transmog system so i can click on my helmet and then all the different helmets i have been finding through the game i have un unlocked the skins and i can basically change my helmet to any of these other helmets also we have the, the outfits is pretty cool they are like a full costume so you have seen on all my characters i'm using this one it's basically just a costume i also have this costume if i wanted i also have this costume or this costume but down here you can see all the customs in the game and the ones where there is a little green arrow on that's the one you can buy right now but for example if i go down and find this one here you cannot buy this one at the moment it's not avail available but it's probably coming in the shop again sometimes in the future the last thing is also you also have dyes so you can also dye your gear so that basically means if i want to be like a blood warrior i could well a blood necromancer i could dye my costume here so i get some red here then i want some darkness in my armor and boom now my character looks like a dark knight but if i someday think nah i want to be a good guy well then we can use some crushed bone on the skin here probably some honey suckles on the play there and then some paladin colors and boom now we look like a shiny knight and you can do this on out well you can do this on outfits but you can also dye your items that you actually find in the open world dungeons raids wherever you have find your gear on. you can also color them so they look differently it's totally up to you if you want to use an outfit or not or actually reflect the gear you actually have on in your game i just like to use my costume in the game because it looks really amazing as more almost any of MMO or game, we also have an inventory. When you press I on your keyboard, you will have an inventory here. It can be reflected in different views. For example, I can also say show backs. And in this way, it will show me each of the backs as probably you used to in other MMOs. But I actually enjoy having this one here, hide back. And then it just becomes one big back. I know other MMOs you can get an add-on for that, but in this game it's just a default that you can have the back like this. So if I took one of my backs off, uh, let's see here. At the moment I can because I have. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it just becomes smaller. And now if I take it on again, it just becomes bigger. Or we can go back and say show backs and see the backs, but I I don't really like that. It is important to notice this is your back. You also have a shared bag up here. This is the shared bag, which is every item I put in here, I have that in all my characters. So for example, I have this token here, which increases my level, and I have this buff here, which gives 100% more experience points. So no matter which character I log on, I can use these two items on. It is also in, important to know that you have all these different items for craftable armor and so on. You can also use, for example, salv salvage kits where you can basically destroy items you have found and they will become materials. If you don't want to have materials in your inventory, you can click on this button here called deposit all materials and then all your materials will go directly into the bank and you can later access them via the bank. It is really smart. In all the main capitals or small cities some small cities but at least in all main capitals you will be finding the banks as you can see over here this is the icon for the bank we can go over there talk with them and here we have the bank it is important to know that the bank is cross account so all the items you have in the bank is for all in your account this is my default bank it's full of a lot of different items and i cannot put any more items in it if I wanted to unlock it, I would have to pay for gems. So basically I have to use either real money or buy gems for gold. The gold you earn in the game, you can also convert them to gems like in other MMOs. So you can either buy additional bank slots for money or for in-game gold. This is something I probably want to do, but it's just important to know that all items you put in here can be accessed for all your accounts on your, sorry, all your characters on your account. 
all the items you have been depositing into materials well the material bank you can find over here material storage and here you'll find all the materials that i have been depositing through time so probably some craftsmen would be able to use all my items here for craft stuff you also have your wardrobe storage here where you can see all the items you have unlocked the skins on which you can use later on for using for transmog if you want it so for example if you have some items here like oh i want to see a dead one we could use that for transmog if this one was actually working for my class and skin but yeah we also have the different outfits miniatures if you want to have like a little pet running next to you and so on so it's a really smart cross-account bank system and of course we also have the auction house which can actually be accessed through the main cities you can see we have the trading post icons over here but you can actually also access trading post anywhere in the world by clicking on the line head in the top left corner up here or press o on your keyboard when you click on this one here first of all it will open up the shop where you can buy for example different costumes and so on for real money or gems that you can convert you can also go to the next tab where you can actually see you can buy gold for like gems so that basically means you can use your credit card and then you can buy from the gems you bought from with your credit card you can then buy real gold so for example here for five gems i could get one gold for 33 gems i could get 10 gold and so on but also we could do it the other way where i could get gems for my gold so for example for my 142 golds i could get 400 gems that i could use in the store for buying a new costume or unlocking more bags in my inventory and so on but the most important thing we want to talk about here is trading post this is basically the auction house where you can sell and buy items for example i can say buy items here and sell stuff Oh, sorry buy items that is on here and sell items so for example these shoes i got here i could say click on them and say i want to sell instantly if you have played albion online it's basically the same auction house where you can create buy orders and create sell orders or you can just buy instantly to the highest buyer for example in this case here we have a lot of well currently buyers we have 448 buyers who want to buy this item for 19 silver so if I am happy with this price, I can say sell instantly. And now I have sold my item for 19 silver. The same with this salvage item here. I can sell it to the highest buyer. Or I can actually also make a custom sell if, I, if I'm not happy about the price. But in this case, the price is totally fine with me. We can also go to home. We can say armor. We can say headgear. We can sort it on levels. We can even set on... We also have some filter here that I only want to see items, which is, you can see here you have basic, fine, masterwork, rare, exotic, ascended, and legendary. And this is what, what I talked about earlier, that ascended gear is basically the best gear in the game. Legendary is having exactly the same stats as ascended, but they just looks more awesome. So let's take a uh, legendary there's no headgear here there's no armor and there's only weapons in the game that is uh legendary so let's see the most expensive legendary is the sword called eternity which you can see is a bit better than my weapon but if i had a ascended weapon you can get through content then it will have the same stats in the end but you here we can see preview and here you can see this is the sword and it has some visual effects when you actually attack like some dark portals or so on but it's it's really cool weapons you can get in here um which is legendary but you can also see it is really really expensive if i for example wanted a two-handed sword legendary i could get this one here called sunrise for two thousand gold if i wanted to buy that for real money for example and say okay i, I want to cheat i simply want to cheat i want two thousand gold Oh, you can only like buy 900 at a time. I mean, already already 1,000 gold is is 4,300 gems. <laughs> oh, sorry, 4,100. And then we can say, okay, I I, I want to buy some more gems. Let's see what gems actually cost. Buy gems, and here we can see 4,000 gems gave me 1,000 gold. So that's basically 50 euro. Then I have half for the legendary weapon. So if I buy for 
uh, 100 euros i would probably almost have enough for a legendary weapon but again that's also 100 bucks for getting a legendary weapon but again you could also just grind the legendary weapon or you can just yeah grind it yourself or get the money in the game there's no one forcing you to actually use real money it just has the potentially that you can actually do it and no it's not buy to win because everyone in the end has a senate gear so it's not giving you any advantage it's because you cannot buy a senate gear you have to play for a senate gear and so and it has the same stats as legendary so there's no buy to win here it's only visuals that you can just either use a lot of hours of grinding or you can buy it guild wars 2 of course also have crafting for example here in the first little town that i meet in the northern area here you can see you have some different crafting stations for example over here we have the master letter worker i can talk with and say please teach me a letter worker down here i can now see that i have now i have learned to be a letter worker and i have learned a lot of things i can craft she also sells some materials that i can use for crafting in different tiers and so on and recipes and all that after that we're going to find our bench which is over here letter working station and now you can see i have different stuff i can actually create and as you can see i can actually create stuff which is items that is already in my bank so you know when i did the deposit material to the bank in my inventory i can actually still create stuff here so i can create a ball of june let's do that and boom i got some experience points in letter working let's create one more one more one more and there we go so now we are level one no is letter worker so basically this is the start of crafting you get crafting materials all around in the world for destroying for example the best item uh, for getting letter for example is getting items armor destroying them and then you get materials for creating them it is a pretty cool system that i actually quite enjoy on some of my character has been like getting so this is the you can say the intro for crafting and of course you can go in here and find another one for example if i wanted to do master tailor please teach me to be a tailor tailor crafting station here and now i can craft stuff over here which also i can see all the materials i have in my bag we can also still go back to the letter working here and see the stuff that i learned here so in this way you can continue your crafting journey find the crafting part you want do you want to go to letter working and create armor do you want to be a, a artist at artifier do you want to be a tailor a weaponsmith and so on it's all up to you but there is plenty of crafting in this game and also crafting can help you create your legendary so you don't have to either buy it and so on one of the cool social things in, in guild wars is guilds yeah guild wars has guilds when pressing g on your keyboard you have your guild menu here for example you can see i have my own guild here called blue bambis it actually only has three members here but it's a pretty little social guild and you can actually be part of up to five guilds which means you can be a part of a, a very great pvp guild a dungeon guild a raid guild and a social guild with your friends in this way you can press in the chat slash g1 g2 g3 and chat with them also you can see there's this little selected mark here if you want to represent a guild and next to your name have the intel for example my guild has the the small bb so for example if i say i want to be uh, representing this guild now next to my name people can see that i am from blue bambis but if i play in my pvp guild i can represent them and then i will be a part of their guild but in that way you are actually able to like be participating in different guilds and activities guilds have rosters missions that you can complete and get rewards they have pvp teams they can set up there is a guild storage in here with different stuff there's a history rankings and so on you can even level up your guild and get rewards through that way the most cool thing is also you have a guild hall so do you would like to continue your guild in tf 
So you have a guild hall which you can set up things, you can expand it, you can make it bigger. I have been part of a guild where we had uh, like a lot of things in here. But in my guild, because it's a totally new guild, it's, it's very limited. We have this little room here and a room over there. And yeah, basically that's it. It's, it, it's a pretty little guild hall. But you can you can make it bigger and you know enjoy it and be social and every time someone is just hanging around you can meet down here and just have fun but it's cool they are supporting this and of course for bigger guilds they have more stuff in here to do once you reach level 30 you will be unlocking your first dungeon for example you can go to your social menu up here contacts and looking for group then you can say looking for group and you can see different things you can actually find a group for. For example, I can say dungeons. And then we have Ascolian, uh, Ascolian Catacombs, which is recommended for the story mode, level 30, and explorable recommended level 35. Each of the dungeons have a story mode where you basically follow a story a campaign and you follow that process. But after that, you also unlock an explorable way where you have different paths you can go into dungeon where you can select if you want to kill all the bosses or just a couple of bosses and you get tokens for doing that each of the dungeons you can see down here has story level and just exploration level and the funny thing about these dungeons is they are fun uh, challenging and you get tokens which you can buy gear for in the place here called lion's ark which is like the hobby everyone is hanging out in there is a dungeon vendor the dungeon vendor here you can say i want to look on your armor or weapons so we can say armor then we can you can choose which of the dungeons do you want to see the armor from let's take citadel of flame and then you can see this is the marks that you would normally get inside citadel of flame and here we can see we have some some, some okay armor it's not the best armor but on the next page, we have the exotic armor, which costs way more, but is also way stronger. As you can see, it is not, um, it's not ascended gear, it's only exotic gear, which means dungeons is actually not going to give you the best armor in the game. It is just giving you full ex uh, exotic gear, which is not the best gear. But it's still okay gear, so it's still a good thing to get full of this. But most people, they only use dungeons now for actually getting cosmetics. So for example, if I look at the, the transmog I can get in this dungeon here, it looks like this. And I have to admit, it's pretty cool items. So definitely still worth doing the dungeons because, I mean, it looks freaking amazing. And the same if I want to see how does a plate a warrior look in this armor here. And also looks pretty cool so dungeons are still worth doing even though it it only gives you exotic gear but still looks pretty well and dungeons are fun to do it's a five man dungeons are five man uh, you can say instance dungeons with bosses trash mobs all the standard things but of course because of we are playing guild wars you don't have to normally tank healer aspect of the game everyone is more like surviving for their own but still you can have party members who are like specking up in supporting or damn tanking and still help out the team you can go to the website called meta battle and see the different specs that people they recommend for playing each of the play modes in the game if you have played World of Warcraft and you did something called Mythic Dungeons where it gets stronger and stronger and you get pretty good rewards, Guild Wars have something like that also called Fractals of the Mist. In Lion's Ark again, you can find the, the social hub where everyone is hanging around. There is the dungeon here called Fractals of the Mist. When going close to the portal, I have to get away again and go to it. You can see you have tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger and each of these mini dungeons well it's basically a dungeon is still five players and people are really using meta specs here so you have to use like the, the good builds for this and but again you can find that on meta battle which spec is the right for you on fractures 
but you can see you have tier one, two, three, four, five, four, and it gets stronger. And you can you can actually get really nice items in here, like a synth gear and so on. So this is for the hardcore PVE players. This is definitely what you're gonna farm and try to get up on. So you can see if you can get all the way up to level hundred. Again, you can open up the social menu by pressing O. Sorry, not O. Pressing pressing Y. Going to looking for group going for fractals and here you can see groups that are right now doing level 1 to 25 which basically is tier 1 and you can then see if there's any groups you want to join or you can actually create your own group but it's it's really smart and in this case here they are recommended after well they are looking for groups and which level they're going to do this group is going to do level 9 10 and 20. So, but this is for the hardcore PvE players who want to do content, they can grind over and over where it gets stronger and they actually get rewarded with the best gear. You can actually get ascended gear in there. Also, when you get to level 80, you can also do raiding again by opening up contact and looking for group. You can see we have something here called raids. Raids are a bit more advanced and require more from you. As you can see, we have different raids here. We have another raid also here so you can say this is a rate looking for groups so this is the people who actually looks for a group and this is rates where they actually looking for more there is different rates in the game with different bosses um, but most of the rates really requires you to play a specific spec you can find in meta battles and they also sometimes require you to be in a higher level once you reach level 80 you will be able to progress even more uh, higher levels why right? it's basically called master rank and you can get up to a very very high mastery rank plus 300 and i see a lot of raids they are actually requiring you to be level 160 before they want you in here but you can always try opening up this menu and see if they are looking for some casual players to play with i mean this guy here looks like he's just you know training so they are pretty much up for anything it seems like but rating is a 10 player instance you can get a ascended gear in there the best gear in the game and it it's supposed to be pretty fun i have to admit i haven't tried it yet but i haven't been so hardcore into the game that i actually did rating but should be a plenty of fun good rewarding but either wise try to find a guild rate with them or you can go in here and rate with random people now we are finally going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is PvP, player versus player. On top of your screen, you will find this PvP tab. When you go in here, you will see you have a rank in PvP, you have the stats of your PvP, the battles you have fought, and you can here up here play unranked arena, or you can play competitive. Competitive requires you to be PvP rank 20, but beside that, you can play unranked until you're 20 level 20 you have the stronghold the conquest mode if you want fast queue i recommend you say all modes but stronghold is basically like a moba game where you have two castles and you send uh, mobs over to the other castle and attack so it's it's like a moba game where you have to kill the end boss for winning in each of the castle like a call conquest is more like a standard arena where you have like three points on the map you have to um to conquer it like you know Arita Bastion in World of Warcraft or Battlefield where you have like ma marks on the map you have to conquer and then capture them so you can even choose to play the mobile like one or the standard battleground one but I normally play with all modes to just get a faster queue and then you can say play but you have to remember PvP is not reliable on your gear or on your items if we enter the PvP lobby here, you will be seeing me going into a PvP world. You can already do this in level 2 when you finish the tutorial in the game. So basically you can install the game, go to the PvP lobby and already be in the PvP world maximum level and you don't need gear in here. Basically you can buy all the weapons there is in here, you have all the talent trees, everything is ready for you. So if you just want to play PvP in this game, install, go to the PvP lobby. And here now, I can go to my character build here. I can pick any talent tree. I can pick any spell in the game. 
I can get any weapon I want over here. There is a weaponsmith. Uh, weapon you can buy all the weapons from him over there. And then I can now queue up for PvP. There is though one thing. Up here on the top we have PvP build. And here you can see you have to select a build. You have to select your weapons, your runes, and your, you can say, amulet. The amulet one is the one that gives you stats. For example, the Berserker amulet here is giving tons of damage. But if I take the one called Valkyria, then I get 9,000 more HP. Still gives a lot of damage, but not as much as Berserker amulet because Berserker amulet goes up in precision, which gives critical strike. But the um, Valkyria amulet gives me more vitality, which is giving me HP. But if you really want to have a strong build, you can go again to major battle and then you can see which of the classes you can go in and see which spec is best for me in PvP. And then you can try to find one that is fitting you. Or of course, you can also create your own custom build if you want to do that. I normally play with the major battle so I can, you know, get one of the major builds. And then of course, I adjust them in a little bit. But this is a very cool thing and unique to Guild Wars, which is even no matter what level you are, you can always jump into the PvP lobby, set up your PvP items, and then just jump directly in to PvP battle and have fun. As you can see right now, the competitive arena right now is a free versus free team deathmatch, which I think is really, really fun. But the problem is I'm only level 14 in PvP, so I can't do this one yet. So I have to grind up to level 20 so i can try this before it actually goes out the competitive mode is always like changing shuffling to something new five versus five two versus two three versus three something like that it is important to notice over here we can see the league we can see here the tournaments if you want to really go into e well not esport but you know competitive there's like tournaments here you can close up to there is reward tracks which is really really cool and the reward tracks is that you can say, okay, when I play PvP, I want to progress in one of these reward tracks. For example, I want to progress in this one here. Boom. Then I progress in this talent, this tree here. Or I can progress in this one here. And then you get, for example, the last one here. This armor box contains unique armor skins. Blah, blah, blah. And then you get those items. So it's totally up to you which of these you actually want to progress in when you play PvP. And then you get some cool transmog, maybe some cool weapons and so on. But you can almost see like this is like death skin, this is like fire skin and so on. So this is the one you have to make like make active when you do PvP. So you progress in it and get rewarded. It's really, really cool. We have missed champions when you, which you can use in Stronghold. This is the champions you will be using as your core team. And the game browser where you can actually join custom servers and custom games where I don't think a lot of people are using it, but you can like get rooms in here and where you can do one versus one and custom games with custom rules and so on. It, it's, it's pretty cool. It's like custom lobbies to play. The last thing I'm going to cover in this beginner's guide is world versus world. When you click up here on this icon up here, or basically click on your, your keyboard B, you will be opening up the world versus world. World vs. World is a really, really cool game, which is three servers that is fighting on one map. You have the Eternal Battleground, the big map where everyone is fighting. Then you have My Server's map, a ban Banner's Mouse Server map, Riverside map, and basically we all have our own castle, which you can also try to capture. You also have Obsidian Sanctum, which is like a hot lobby you can stand in and wait. Or you have Age of the Mist, which is also a big battle you can do, but most people, they just do it while they are in queue for Eternal Battlegrounds. In the peak time in the evening, there's only allowed a couple of people on each of the sides. I think it's something like 100 versus 100 versus 100 or 200, 100, 100 you know, something like that. And then there can be a queue in the evening, and then you can go into Age of the Mist while you are in the queue for the big one, Eternal Battlegrounds. If we try to go into the Eternal Battleground while there's no queue at the moment, I'll just quickly show you what you can actually do in here. As you can see now, if we open the map, we can see different control points. The red team is my team, then we have the green team and the red, the, the blue team. Oh, here we can see this is the blues world. 
here we have the reds world and the greens world. And again, if we go in and press B, we can see my server is red, Riverside is green, and Abaddon's mouth is a blue. Basically, it's all about just trying to capture as many bases as possible and capture the castle in the middle, and then every time they keep give points. As you can see in the top right now, every these minutes we get points. As you can see right now, potential points. So that means every time we hit the minute, the timer, blue team is now getting 170 points, green is getting 146, and red is getting 105. This basically means right now, right now blue is leading and they are going to keep leading because they are getting more points right now but that's because they have most bases as you can see right now they have all this they have all that so and all this so it, depending on how many zones your team has that also gives more points in this but in the end it's a really cool system there's a big wall running around and every time you join this you just have to look for a commander's mark as you can see right now there is one over there commander that's another person who have got the title to be a commander and have said okay fine i'm gonna lead this you can right click on that per left click on the person say join squad and now i'm in, a, in the group of this squad here and i can run over to them and help them so basically this mode is all about just following the commander do what they say follow them and just capture bases after bases after bases after bases it's really cool really fun and you can get into some really huge battles it is important to go into this one here as you can see when you go into the world versus world menu you have some talent trees you can go up in you can for example go up in this one that helps you unlock a mountain here you also have some others you can go through you have a re reward track which you can while you do this and you get experience points you can get items also at the same time you can also go in here on the match overview and see how it goes at the moment and when are you gonna get a new chest in here and then see which of the others you can queue up for but basically when you get in here it's very important you know that that you can just always try to see where is the commander you can look on the minimap there's a commander down there left click join squad very important if there is no commander icons in here, it's a bit chaos to be in here. There's no one really leading the game. So I would just leave the game and maybe come back after 5, 10 or 30 minutes and then see if there's a commander there, join them and play with them. But when there's no commander in here, it's a bit of a messy play to basically play. So thanks for watching everyone. This was my beginner guide for Guild Wars 2. I know it was a lot of information. It was a long video. If any of the pro players are watching this they probably have thousands of things that i've maybe forgotten but i feel like this video is a really good one for everyone out there who, who just want to get into guild wars and see what is this game about but i think i have covered a lot of the basic beginner things about the game so you know you have an idea about what this game is all about if you have some things you know about the game that i haven't mentioned in the video feel free to leave down a comment in the comment section i will give it a heart if it's some useful information for other players to seek but else thanks for watching everyone it was a pleasure making this beginner video and i just wanted to tell i have mainly begun to play this game again i really have fun with some friends in here and we are soon getting a new expansion probably the rumors are saying in summer 2021 it's only rumors who knows but we're getting some more specs to play on each of the specializations and it's going to be really really fun i think so welcome to guild wars 2 i hope you enjoyed this new player guide have an awesome evening